The movie follows a Mormon missionary confessing the humiliating depths of his pornography addiction to his mission president. What a pathetic and tragic story. I was raised Mormon. Growing up, the prophet of the church, Gordon B. Hinckley, really went after pornography as an evil invading the home. Having this beloved grandfather figure constantly talk about porn and masturbation was, uh, really weird. The majority of the crew was ex-Mormon, and we filmed in uh, a Mormon church my great-grandfather built. Look, there's Ben. He had produced the movie. And Chad, he was our boom op. And Colin, he's in the movie. And Drew, too. Chris, he served. Jordan, our editor, was baptized. And Kyle, he did the graphics of the movie. The crew um, are, are nice. Uh, the crew was really nice to me. Oh, and there's Sam. He really took upon himself the mantle of elder. All in all, this movie was a labor of love as we came together to make sense and air out all that weird-ass Mormon baggage. Hope you like it. Hi. Hi, Jeff. How you doing, Greg? How are you? I'm, I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for talking about your uh, Sundance short, The Touch of the Master's Hand. Yeah, sure thing. I love it. Love the bag. I, I love that... Uh, the quote you had, some sort of weird ass Mormon baggage. Was that a quote that you made this film? <laughs> yeah, yeah, trying to air out my weird ass Mormon baggage. <laughs> you know, Elder Hyde, he's not having the best day, is he? You know, team building exercises, it's kind of dangerous, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're uh, very aggressive and they're wanting to connect. And, uh, you know, I love the line you have about, you know, logic and religion don't mix. You know, and you have the line about how did horses get in there? They didn't come over till later, you know, with the conquistadors. So it's I use that kind of logic all the time because I grew up Protestant, you know. So yeah, it's like in the in, in Genesis, you know, there's Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Cain kills Abel, and then Cain goes out to the land of Nod where he met his wife. I'm like, where did she come from? You know, is <laughs> another creation in the next county or something? You know, so I love how you have that line, you know, horses, where do the horses come from? Did you find many kind of lines like that in your short? You know, it's kind of illogic. Um, that's interesting. I mean, I think all the characters um, are good, faithful Mormons, and they all speak from a genuine place. So their logic is sound, um, but there's certainly a way they talk and, you know, faith is at the forefront of everything they do. So whether it's in the chastisement of the elder and his misbehaviors, or the um, instruction to uh, kick the habit, there is certainly, I think, a gap between like, you know, um, the way maybe you and I would approach a, path, uh, a, a problem and how the mission president does. And the problem, I guess, we I hate calling it self-abuse. That just sounds so, I, I've always hated that term. Um, but he, Elder Hyde, uses avatar <laughs> i mean i found that hysterical yeah. that, that gave that gave levity in such a serious situation so i love you know he's so repressed that he gets off to avatar yeah 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 <laughs> and he kind of uh, uh how do i say this <laughs> it's like uh did you know many people like that i mean there were people used to are use you asking are you asking me if i get off on avatar no i didn't do it but I've, I've known people growing up when i was a kid they would use like sears catalog and just some of the most ridiculous things because they were so repressed in their religion well you know i think you know whatever it is that um gets you off or turns you on you know just uh no shame no sex shame you know it's all good it all floats your boat so um you know, there's no reason that we need um, authority figures telling you what you feel and why you feel it. Well, if I had ever buried my weapons, I would need a hole the size of a Grand Canyon, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you, <laughs> wow, holy cow, that's a I'm lot. I'm from Las Vegas, I mean, it's 24-7. Yeah. We're not Sin City for no reason, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. I love how you thank James Cameron in the final credits too. Just that little, it was really funny. Oh yeah, James Cameron, I mean, couldn't, there wouldn't have been a joke in the movie if it wasn't for James. I hear that you actually shot your short in your own Mormon church. Is that true? Uh, it's not my own Mormon church, but um, it was a Mormon church in Southern California, which is kind of rare access. Uh, my, my family has deep roots in Southern California. My great, great grandfather moved there uh, before the Great Depression. And he actually, there weren't more, many Mormons there in the 1910s and 20s. And so he was part of, you know, the original kind of, um, Mormons that kind of populated that area and built one of the first chapels in Southern California in the San Gabriel Valley. And so that 
is um, where we filmed. And that, that just kind of just was happenstance more than anything, um, but, but it, it all worked out. And I really wanted to mention your lighting because you have sunlight shining. It was very heavenly at times. It was really, had that yeah. yellow glow. Was that you know something you staged? Oh yeah, definitely. The movie's lit and um, shot in a specific way. That, uh, I kind of like, you know, grew up watching these like weird Mormon movies as a kid on Sundays because we you know could watch regular movies. It was kind of a keep the Sabbath day holy kind of a vibe. So um, yeah, we had the cross and the switchblade. The Protestants yeah. had their own ones too, you know, these really now, scary, the mark of the beast, all these scary ones that would scare us to death. Now that's a kink I could get into. <laughs> and those little booklets, you know, where they told you, you were going to go to hell. And this, I forget what they call those. I'm going blank on them. But yeah, the Protestants, uh, the Christians really have some really scary stuff out there, you know. So, uh, so tell me about getting into Sundance, Gregory. I mean, where were you when you heard and how excited were you? I was very stoked. I was in a car. I got a voicemail because like I had this number coming in from Arizona, and I was like, I don't know anyone from Arizona, so I ignored it. And then I read like the voice memo dictation, and it was like, Hi, this is mm -mm, so and so from the mm -mm Film Festival. So I tried to listen to the the message, but I, I couldn't tell what what you know um, organization he was calling from. I thought he was maybe saying Slam Dance, which I played at a couple times. So during the call, when I called back, most of the conversation I just was like listening very closely. That he was saying Sundance. Um, and it was great. Um, I found out behind a dumpster at a rest stop. And um, and then, you know, we celebrated, jump, jumped around, and, and the fest has been great too. I mean, obviously, um, COVID's kind of a bummer, can't deny it. Difficult times, we've all heard it. But I'm, I'm here with some filmmaker friends that made the movie. We've quarantined it up and now potted it up. And um, it's been great watching the movie, and it's great just having the movie so readily available. Um, to stream and watch. I would think that's a great motivator for your next project. Oh, definitely. I mean, we're, um, you know, there's not much to do right now, uh, except for dream up the next thing. So um, that's, that's what we're doing. Well, Gregory, congratulations. And I uh, enjoyed your film immensely. And uh, Thank you. Have, have a good rest of the festival. We'll talk again soon. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. I hope you have a great day in Sin City.